What's up, freaks? Welcome to the Russian and the Freak Show episode number two. We have a chair for a reason. You trying to be taller than me or something? Yeah. The, the Russian and the Freak Show. This is going to be an end of the year edition. We're going to go take a deep dive. I'll give you a couple seconds for to, to join us here live if you want to join the discussion. We're going to go a deep dive into reflecting on the previous year, asking you a lot of tough questions that you're going to need to ask yourself. And you should be writing them down, taking notes here live. And if you're doing the recording, or even if you're watching live, you should rewatch this so you can pause it and make sure you get all these questions down so that you can reflect on them and give written out deep, deep answers. You should literally have pages and pages of notes from this episode alone for reflecting on 2020 and planning and preparing for 2021. But first, the Russian and the Freak Show is all about how to maintain your equilibrium and function in a dysfunctional world that we live in. This fucked up dysfunctional world we live in as a freak family in business and life. So that you can transform chaotic complexity, which is going on in the world, into your own special personal normalcy. Make, make crazy normal. Once you can make the crazy normal, everything becomes easy. So we're going to jump into some things but first, we just want to talk about how this year should be, how we should be reflecting on the last year, how we should be setting up for the year coming up. So we want to start with some ratings. Give yourself some ratings on a scale of 1 to 10. Uh, I would say 8. Give yourself ratings on all these categories from 1 to 10. Okay, so we're going to start with, uh, just write it down like Steve said, we're going to start with our family. How do you rate your family on the scale one to 10? Now we're gonna go into fitness, write it down fitness on a scale one to 10. Write it down finances on a scale one to 10. Your discipline, energy, confidence, action, attack, and how you consider yourself to be a freak. Because as Steve said, all of us have that freak inside of us every single one of us is different and you should by accepting it and by tuning into your own self you should consider yourself at some kind some kind of a freak and write it down on a scale one to ten how you're gonna rate yourself so again we have family write it down one to ten fitness finances discipline energy confidence action attack meaning like how fast you apply in life how quick you are to make a decision and the freak. That's how we have to start. You have to write those down. And we're going to break those down a little more. So family, you're probably going to give yourself two scores because as I've done this now with thousands of people done these type of evaluations with literally thousands of people, the family, you're probably going to give yourself two scores. One is going to be your immediate family, your spouse, partner, your, your fucking goat, or whatever you're into, and your kids. That's going to be your immediate family. But then you have probably a second score, which is, Parents, siblings, aunts, uncles, cousins. That's probably going to have a second score because a lot of times those two are very different. And that's fine because, listen, your family that you were born into, you didn't choose that family. Your family that you start on your own, you did choose that family. So they're probably going to be very different. And sometimes the family you didn't choose will affect the family you did choose. And you need to make sure they don't. So you probably have two different various scores. Fitness, the fitness score. I'm going to break each of these down again so you can have some time to write this down. Give yourself a score and put any thoughts or notes you want onto it. The, the fitness should not just be physical fitness, but should be mental fitness. Then let's break down the others. It's DCAP. If you look at the acronym, it's DCAP. Discipline, Energy, Confidence, Action, and Freak. So discipline. Discipline, think of this in a way of, do you have structure? Do you control your day? Do you control your life? Do you have strategy in everything you do? Are you, do you have integrity? Are you controlling your emotions? Do you have mental toughness? And what's mental toughness? Mental toughness is the... Is the is having emotional discipline, but also emotional resiliency. And there's a difference between discipline and resiliency. Emotional discipline is holding the fucking line, not letting yourself break, not letting yourself get too high or too low. Emotional resiliency is we're all fucking humans. So the times that you do go too high or low, emotional resiliency is the ability to bounce back, to get to that middle and back to your emotional discipline. So that together to me is what mental toughness is. And that all falls into discipline. Then are you just, do you have commitment and consistency because commitment and consistency are needed and all aspects of discipline discipline is the mother of everything that we fucking do so give yourself a score on one to ten in the area of discipline the next was energy want to break that down energy 
throughout your day, are you fading? Are you failing? Are you are you attacking? You have the whole. Are you going throughout the whole day with enthusiasm and endurance, with strength, like feeling strong throughout the day, literally physically strong, but also having energy mentally, mentally and physically. Or do you have durability for those days where your business has to go the extra hour and stay up all night to do what I have to do or, or to take care of the kids and, and balance all that stuff? Are you doing that shit with fucking energy, with fire? Are you bringing the fire every second of every second? That's what energy is. And I like to think of energy as, are you infectious? Is your, is your energy infectious to other people around you? They feel it. They can literally feel it in their freaking bones when they're around you. And I like to say that energy means to, to wake someone the fuck up and shake them the fuck up. That's what energy means to me, to have that effect on people, to wake them up, shake them up, and move them into action. And once you have that discipline and energy, then that could give you the confidence. Confidence means, and give yourself a score on, so discipline, the energy, and now confidence. Confidence means preparation, be prepared. Do you, do you, your belief in yourself to reach your goals in those other areas of family, of fitness, of finances. That's really what confidence is. Your belief in your ability to figure it out no matter what the fuck happens. No matter how bad shit goes and masks and bullshits and riots and presidents and whatever the fuck the world throws at you, you have the confidence that you don't have to stress it because you know you're going to figure it out. And from there, action. Action and attack go the same. They're both A. A words. I've been called other A words several times a day. It's only... 10 a.m. here in California, I've been called a, a different A word probably three, four times right today, but fuck it, get to the back of the line because there's a whole long line of those people that want to call me much worse. <laughs> anyway, action, attack. To me, that just means the word kill. Simple as that, kill. So when I, I'm having a moment of slowing down or feeling weak or feeling that inner bitch coming on, I just tell myself literally, kill. Kill the fear, kill the doubt, kill, kill the procrastination, kill your anxiety, Kill your laziness. Kill the inner bitch that's in you trying to make you stop doing stuff. And that's going to make you take action and just attack. Attack in everything you do. You've heard it. How you do anything is how you do everything. So you need to attack and take action and force other people to take action. Push and pressure people to take action. Motivate people to take action. How motivated are you to, to get off your ass, to walk the walk, not to just talk, to shut the fuck up and actually do it, to make shit happen? Action means stopping a little bitch. Get out of the stands and get onto the field. Get into the arena. Shed some blood of your own, of the enemy. That's what it is, making shit happen. Have a, having a bias for movement. Just going forward and, of course, being motivated. And that leads to freak. The F. The F. My second favorite F word. I think you already know my other fucking favorite one is. I just said it. Freak is meaning... It doesn't just mean to be a weirdo and, and color your hair all fucking like a clown or something or walking around looking like Pennywise. <laughs> it means... To be a role model. To be unique. Be yourself. Be real. Live life on your own fucking terms. March to the beat of your own drum. Not giving a fuck what anyone thinks about you. But doing it with humility. And having the courage to do it. And to be yourself. So really freak to me means role model. Because I want to show my kids it's okay to be themselves. To be a little whacked out. A little nutty. As long as they're having humility with it. And doing it with courage. And really, freak to me means emulation. Are you being someone that other people want to be like? And so give yourself, we're still a few more, give yourself a score in all of those, 1 through 10, the family, the fitness, the finances, then the discipline, energy, confidence, action, and your freak score. And there's still a few more to go after that. You should give yourself a score of 1 to 10 on the rest of those, and then give yourself a score on these next few. Okay, the next few coming up is the leadership motivation, communication, decision-making, and problem-solving. And we're going to dive into those a little bit more, right? So again, it's leadership, 1 to 10, motivation, 1 to 10, communication, and decision-making, problem-solving. So write those down. And overall, what would be your life score? Uh, rate yourself again on a 1 to 10. So just where overall, just your life in general. You gave yourself a life score, 1 to 10. Where are you overall? Just give it, throw it a number in there, 1 to 10. So again, those last four were leadership, motivation, communication, and decision making. Decision making slash problem solving. To me, that's pretty much the same thing. Because all problem solving is, all problems are, are situations that need someone to make a decision on. Situations that need a solution. That's all. That's all. Problems are. No such thing as a problem. They're just situations. That's all really it is. 
So it's a situation that needs someone to step the hell up and make a decision. So give yourself a score in leadership. Now, not just leadership. You're, you're thinking leadership like oh, a general and, and barking orders. No, leadership with your friends and family, leadership in your family, leadership in your career or your business. If you're a business owner, leadership with your staff, or even if you're not a business owner, leadership with your peers, leadership with up and down the chain of command, leadership with the, your subordinates that maybe are answer you at work, or maybe even leadership up the chain of command. You need to lead the people that are your leaders because in order for them to be better decision makers, you need to lead them to help them make better decisions with maybe information or expertise or skill that you have that they don't have. So give yourself a score in leadership overall in life. You need to bundle all that together. And then the, the other, and next one was motivation. That's a pretty easy one. How motivated are you to get shit done? How much are you able to motivate others? Motivate in all, and, and you have to look at this in all areas of life. Personal, professional, mental, physical, emotional. How motivated are you? And then communication. Communication is not only talking, it's transmitting and receiving. How well are you able to transmit and receive communication? How well are you able to get, you know, communicate your standards and expectations? In, in, in your, again, personal and professional life. You need to, to communicate your high standards and expectations to your staff. If you're a business owner, entrepreneur, a manager, whatever it is. But you also need to communicate standards and expectations for your family. And in your relationships. And what you need. Like if you need a damn sandwich made, that you need to communicate that. That's your standards and expectations. If you want a damn sandwich or a protein shake. We got shakes every single night because there's communication on we need a damn protein shake. Everyone has their part and their roles to do. And we literally, we call it out. There's going to be shakes every day, every night. And seven days a week, we have shakes. But that's all part of communication. Like, communicate what your needs are, what you need to have in your life. And if you don't, and just assume, oh, people should know that because you know it. That's just you being stubborn. That's you being a poor leader. That's you being a poor communicator. And you need to communicate it a much more clear and concise. Simple, clear, and concise. And then decision-making, problem-solving, that's an easy one. I already touched on it, is looking at, not at problems, but at situations that just need someone to step up and make a freaking decision. Whether it's the right decision, wrong decision, doesn't matter. So how are you as a decision-maker? So we're going to recap all those. There was 13, I think 13 of those. Lucky number 13. Let's count. Let's do this. Let's see, Hoover, do. Yeah, if you have any questions, comments, put them down there in the comments. I'll try to catch them as we're going. Yes, and uh, before we even. Hoover, do. We're 21. What's going on? Yes, jump in the conversation. Let's Thank talk about it. Make sure you give yourself a score in all these areas. Thank you guys for actually posting. We would like for you, as we even go along, to participate. So we know that you actively listening, actually writing down, because sometimes if you listen to something and you're going to say, oh, I'm going to answer this later, your thoughts come and go and you're going to forget about it. So, and this live stays on. You can always go back and see what you have written. So please participate. We would love to hear from you. Where are you coming from? Uh, is it your first time on the show or is it is it you've been always coming and seeing us live? That would be great and we would love to hear from you. So again, let's count from the top. Number one was the family. Number two was fitness. Number three is finances. Four, discipline. Five, energy. Six, we have confidence. Seven, action slash attack. Eight, freak. Then we have leadership. Number nine. 10 is motivation, 11 communication, 12 decision making, problem solving. Did I go? And then <laughs> and then your total life score, your life score just 1 to 10. What what is that? Now if you're doing this live, I want and and you're really following along, you just did your all those 12 things and then the 13th was your life score, rating on a scale of 1 to 10. If you're doing this on recording and didn't finish writing those down, I want you to to pause the video, if you're doing a recording, and finish doing all those 13, 1 to 10, before we go on to the next spot. If you're doing this live with us, you should have already gave yourself a score in these. Later on, you should go look back at these again, those scores you gave, and write down in detail. Literally, you can write paragraphs or pages for each one of those 13. You should have pages of notes on just those, why you gave it the rating, and then reflect on all the questions we're going to go over here in a second. Now, after you, you've you gotten that 1 to 10 scale, 1 to 10 scale for all 13 things, what I want you to do is add up all those numbers. What did that numbers come? So you have a max of 130 because there was 13 things, including that life score. Actually, let's take the life score out. Take the life score out. 
So just the first 12 things, excluding the life scores, that's 12 different things. Add that number up. That's 12, 12 things. Add them up. And as you're doing this, I just want to tap on the leadership for a second because uh, some of you might not be per se leaders. Maybe you you feel that you're not, you are not because of the position that you have. But all of us are leaders at, at some point. And I want to mention this, that you are an influencer. As a, as a human being, you influence and your goal in life should be to have the positive influence on others. So one way on the other, tune into yourself and we're going to go deep into this and you can feel like you have a leadership position. So we're going to go down, write, you, write down your number guys, write it down for us. What's the score and we can move forward. So then once you're finished with that score, so you did all 12, 1 through 10, then you added all those numbers up, and I want you to divide that by 12, and that's going to give you a number between 1 through 10, again. Now, how did that number that you just did when you divide all those numbers up, how did that compare to your life score you gave? Because don't forget, we gave you did a life score 1 to 10, you also scored those 12 things. So I'll go back in in case you were confused with that. You had 12 different things you scaled, scored 1 to 10. I want you to add up all those numbers. So say you did an 8, 7, 6, 9, 5, 4. Add those 12 numbers up, then divide that by 12. Once you divide that by 12, it's going to give you a number somewhere between 1 and 10. How did that number compare to your life score? So if you gave yourself a life score of 8, but then you divide all those numbers up and you had a 5 or a 6, you're like, holy shit. You, you, your perception of where your life is at and where you are is really a little different from reality if you were honest on those 1 to 10 scales. Because then... It happens all the time, almost 100% of the time, that someone goes through all this, and, and then we compare the life score to the, to the the all those added up score, and it's completely different. They just think life is great, but then realize, holy shit, I suck as a leader, I suck as a communicator, I'm not making anywhere near the money I should be making, I have no discipline, I sleep in all the time, I miss workouts when I can, I make excuses, but then they gave the life score an 8, but their average score of all those 12 categories end up being a 5 or a 6. It just shows you need to snap the hell out of it and wake the hell up getting out of this fog of this 2020 and go forward and that's exactly what we're going to go through and break through now we're going to break down reflecting on the previous year and setting up success for 2021 and we're going to break into a few different sections we're going to start off with an action section about actions you took in the previous year then we're going to talk about accountability what accountability did you take or fail to take in this previous year and then what did you what did you need to accept from the year? So an acceptance section, and then what were some of your achievements and accomplishments from the year? Then from there, we're gonna switch gears to start moving forward into the next year. Because that's some of that's gonna be some probably negative shit. Then we're gonna to have to flip it over into what decisions do you need to make for this year? How do you need to design your year coming up? And how did you fail to design the previous year? And then what are your dreams, your goals, your your fucking destiny that you're looking to go forward with? We're going to break all that down and then also give you tons of ways to accomplish all these things you're talking about in your goal setting. So we're going to start first with action. Yes. What action, what actions have you taken in 2020? Write down exactly what move you forward. What to cut out. That's number two. I'm going to kind of go with steps. So write it down if if you just maybe bullet points okay so you're not gonna lose you can always go back to this and edit because believe me like when we do this uh, sometimes it this requires time and your energy because we forget certain things or we might think that it's not um it doesn't matter right but it but it is so the bullet points and always you can go back to this and edit what did you cut out in 2020 but we talking about the aspect of of the top that we discuss we talking about family we talking about fitness we talking about your business in 2020 okay and <clears throat> so the the actions that you cut out like dead end project you know, whatever was there that you did pretty much didn't, uh, didn't do. So 
Write those down. So first is, what actions did you take in 2020? What did you actually take action on? Then you need to ask yourself, what actions did you fail to take in 2020? Then you need to ask yourself, okay, the actions I took, the actions I didn't take. What did I do that I should have cut out in 2020? What should I have cut out? What should I have not been doing? Either a dead-end project, something that was wasting my time. Maybe it's a person. Maybe you need to cut out a person. Maybe you need to eliminate someone, assassinate a motherfucker. I don't know what it is. But what did you, what should you have cut out from this last year? It could be bad habits. It could be your, a fo- something you're focusing on the wrong thing, the wrong direction. Something that wasn't moving the needle. If it wasn't going towards the direction of your goals or your, your dreams or what you're looking to do or your hobbies, you should have fucking cut it out. Or, and again, maybe it was people. Yes, who to connect with. So what kind of connections did you make in 2020, but also what connections you did not make in 2020? Maybe you had some thoughts of connecting with people, connecting uh, with social media, your, your group at work, your friends, family, whoever that was. Write those down. Maybe maybe your spouse, maybe your kids. Like think about these groups that we did and apply to this. And again, remember, uh, this takes time. Okay, maybe um, maybe connections of writing emails to uh, people that you're supposed to be writing emails. Like those those you really need to dig deep, deep in that and find the answer. Uh, who did you uh, do? Do you need to connect with this year in 2021? Because so we have the past year and now this year. Because this list that you didn't connect in 2020, it's gonna show up in this this year. So write these bullets. Maybe you have groups. Maybe you have a spouse, family, friends. Maybe people at work. Maybe someone on social media. So this is very important. And then tap into the 2021. Now, what you need to what you need to create in 2021, but also what did you create in 2020? So when it comes to creating, what did you first if you notice each one of these, first we're talking about what, what did you what was maybe wrong or off or need to be improved on from this previous year, and then basically how are you gonna unfuck yourself and fix it? So what did you fail to create in the previous year? What are some things you should have done, should have worked on, but you failed to create? Then what did you create in 2020? What did you work on? What did you actually start from scratch? Maybe you created, maybe you had to change the way your business goes, whatever it is. What did you create in 2020? Now taking those answers and think about what do you need to work on and create? That's not going to be a waste of time. That's not going to be one of those things you should have cut out. And maybe things you worked on and were creating is shit you should have cut out. You're wasting your time. These are deep questions you need to ask yourself. Write them down and you should be spending hours on this, reflecting on this stuff and planning and preparing for the for the year coming up. So that was what did you what did you fail to create in 2020? What did you create in 2020? Because you do need to give your we don't want to just dig you in a hole. We're gonna give you some fucking credit for what you did. Take some credit for the shit you did in the year. But then also what do you need to create for the year coming up? And you know what this is important because sometimes we we want to put so much into this world and you spend time on creating so many things but then you ended up doing too much and then you think like you fail in all these areas because it was way too much that's why we do these exercises to help you to not repeat the same mistakes in 2021 right so now very important part i think in this whole thing is who were you grateful for in 2020 and who you will be grateful for in 2021 is this is gonna are you gonna repeat the, the the same group? Are you gonna be grateful for the same things or maybe different things that happened in this 2020 that you've never experienced and you're gonna carry on in 2021? And we're talking about looking around in in the area of your life and really seeing every single person, everyone that comes to your life expect accepting them for who they are and being grateful for them because we always learn from a person that comes from your life and hopefully this learning path the learning path is a good way to learn right not the bad way but always think about it that people come to your life or things come to your life and sometimes we just really not grateful for it and think 2020 was the year when you look at that 
maybe you you miss on things maybe there was su such a significant year when the COVID happened and you didn't acknowledge the people but now you still have the chance today we still have one day that you can call them and say thank you for everything and being grateful for them to have them in their life and i hope that you're gonna look into this year a little bit deeper but we don't want this year only to be like this we want the next year to be like this because you know what when things bad happens in our life then if you really look deep and say you feel that emotion and you're like, wow, I am grateful for that person. I am so grateful to have them in their life. I'm grateful for what I have. But then things get better and you forget. So put a grateful and like big ginormous capital letters. Because, ginormous? Is that yeah, a word? Ginormous? I don't know. I am a freak. So I put ginormous. Is ginormous really uh, in, in a dictionary? Who knows? But put it in big letters being grateful for one another and appreciate person saying thank you. Thank you for what they have done and how they impacted your life. And I have to tell you from my own uh, really quick example. I This is the quick example? Yes. I'd hate to see the long example. Holy shit. I'm not talking about ginormous. This is a ginormous appreciate. speech. This is a ginormous <laughs> speech. Holy shit. Appreciate the elderly. Appreciate the older people that are in your life because one day you're going to miss them dearly. Your parents, if they put an impact in your life and you're close to them, and your grandparents. Yes, appreciate these people because I'm sure that they put a huge impact in your life. Anyway, let's go forward. Holy fuck. And if, on that note, we're out of time. We can't get to the 75% of stuff we have to because we're being we grateful. <laughs> yeah, so much for that. Mm. All right, next one we're going to go to is accountability. Accountability. What did you fail to take accountability for? What were you bullshitting for? What were you blaming other people? What were you making excuses for basically accountability is fucking excuses and that's why you see it's tattooed on my fucking arm so i can never forget it so what did you fail to take accountability for like this is your chance to own up for it and and you have one day to unfuck it and make it right but then on the same note what did you take accountability for in this last year so again we're gonna kick you in the nuts but then we're gonna pat you on the back right after because we know there's some fucked up things you need to learn from right and improve going leaping into the next year but there's also things you did do right that you need to build upon and exploit that for momentum going into the next year. So what did you fail to take accountability on in the next year? What did you did you take accountability on in the next year? And then leading <laughs> with that right into what lessons did, did that help you learn in the past year? And then how are you gonna take those lessons? And L's are not losses, they're lessons. Ray Carre, our good friend, Navy SEAL, taught us that. He's, he says, there's no such thing as losses. The L's are just lessons as long as you can learn from it and move forward. So what lessons did you learn from 2020 from these mistakes or were you fucked up in your accountability? And how are you going to use that going into 2021, which tails right into the next one is what could you have done better just overall in 2021? What could you have done better in 2021? What could you have done more of? What could you have done better? What could you have done different? And that's a pretty broad one. That's why you're going to need to just write these questions down and reflect on it later on. You're not going to be able to get everything you need right now in this time. Yes, guys. And this is, listen, this is not an easy thing. You might want to write this down. And first of all, don't do this alone. Do this also with someone else. Do it with your spouse or even with your family. Sit down and do it all together because sometimes... When you write those things and you think you wrote everything on yourself, but you're going to ask your spouse and your spouse is going to tell you this and this. And you know what? It's going to hurt when the spouse is going to say the bad things. But if, if they say it and someone else, maybe a friend of yours will say it, that means that this is actually existing, but you don't see this. Because it's sometimes... We, 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 we don't see those things. And most of the times I think we don't see it because you don't step out of your own self and look at you and like, okay, do I do it the right way? Unless you're really retrospecting and looking deeply into this. So a person next to you can lead you and say, you know what? Yes, this, this you, you've hooked up on this. Well, this is a doubt show, so we say those things. Cooper Duber anyway. says, I failed to take accountability for my fitness. And I let excuses get in the way along with medical conditions. So, well, Hoover Duber, it's your lucky day. How about a free week of unlimited boot camp boxing sessions we can hook you up with where they're online right from your house. You need little to no equipment. We'll hook you up. That's exactly what we do. One of the businesses we have is online fitness training. So just send me a private message. We'll hook you up with a free week and we will get you rolling to let you 
unfuck that. And not starting tomorrow, not starting in the new year, no fucking New Year's resolution because then it gives you an excuse to eat like shit and drink tonight. Start that today. Start today. We send you a recording of a workout you could do right now. I'll send it. You, if you send me a message, I will send you a workout you could do right now, right in your home, any fitness level with zero equipment needed. Fuck, I'll send you five of them if you send me a message right now because we need to get started today. As long as you're going to commit to doing the workout today and not tomorrow because that's bullshit. That's a, that's a, a, a New Year's resolution, whatever. All right, the next okay. one I'm going to go to is acceptance. What do you need to just accept from this year? This year was fucked up. Things went went sideways. Maybe relationships were crushed. Businesses were closed. Whatever it is, you were stuck at home. Whatever it was, what do you need to accept from 2020? Just write it down. What do you need to just make your brain dump? We do a daily brain dump in journaling, but this is a year brain dump. What do you need to dump behind and leave in 2020? And then what's your way well, you're going to think about it? What's your perspective you're going to have on it? How are you going to frame that so it doesn't just drag you through the mud across the line into a new year, but it actually uses it again as a lesson learned. That's what you need to think about. And, and accepting this stuff doesn't mean that you agree with it, doesn't mean you like it, doesn't mean it's right, doesn't mean you approve of it. It just means you're accepting it because you can't fucking control it. And, and I guarantee you the things that you need to accept from the previous year are shit you couldn't control, shit you had no control over. And you need to be appreciating the things that you can control. Focus on the things you can control. Not all the bullshit that goes on there and masks and the fucking face diapers and nonsense and all that other stuff. That's the way you need to think about it. Yes, and, and you, especially this, this 2020 because this stuff is still going on with us and almost we don't want you guys to take it. As Steve said, things that are uncontrollable, things that you did not, could not control. That's the stuff that can impact you the most in 2021 because we still in this whole chaotic world. So now what bothered you this year? What bothered you in 2020? And this is a very important question to uh, write down, uh, you know, any challenges, any concerns, relationships, things that happen at work, things that happen in your business. Um, what was the biggest disappointment this year? What also burned you out? Because there are things we, we as humans act re emotionally and obviously uh, uh, repeated emotions can totally dig you down and put you in a hole. And then how are you going to get yourself out of the hole? Some of you might feel like this already. And if you're not going to do this, put it in writing, get your thoughts on a piece of paper. You're going to drag the same thing down, the same emotions in 2021. Today, we got to leave certain things behind and start fresh and start like with a victorious mind. So we want to feel good about the 2021 coming by being also honest, right? Now, uh, have you been congruent also with your mission? Congruency meaning really tuning into your own self, loving what you do, being being joyful, being enthusiastic, really enjoying every single moment. That's being congruent and not doing things that somebody, you know, pushes you constantly to do and you have no joy, no, like, uh, life, uh, feeling good moments, you know? That's very hard in life to do that. So you need to really think this, think this down and think, what am I good at? What things I can do in life that, cause me feeling like flawless. I don't even feel like work. That's very important. All right. What have been your achievements this year? What have been your achievements in 2020? The, the, the wins, the victories. Even though the year was hard, I'm sure that you had some. And again, we forget about those. So you got to write those down, see this. And you know what the plus is about this whole thing that we're doing? Next year, in 2021, you're going to look at those and you're going to compare them to the next year. Having year after year is going to be tremendous because you're going to see either you're growing, you're changing, or you're kind of in the same, same spot. So probably a lot of these questions that we've been asking you, you're going to be down the dumps. You're going to be like, holy shit, I'm, a, I'm just a fucking loser. Look at this shitty year I had because a lot of this stuff intentionally was to do that, to look back on the year. But again, look at them to help dig yourself out of the hole. Use those things that put you down the dumps that dug you in the hole. Use them as the tool to build the ladder to climb yourself out of the hole. And that's what I'm going to end this segment with, this part of this, with what were your top three personal wins because we want to at least give you a little bonus. We've been kicking you in the nuts all day. 
stomping on your fucking stomping a mud hole in your ass while you're on the ground. So now we want to finish this section off before we go on to building the next year with what were your top three personal wins for 2020? Just overall. Then what were your top three professional wins? Just your biggest, highest level, needle moving, relationship moving wins. So the top three personal wins and then the top three professional wins is what where you need to put on right now to give yourself a little credit before we go into the next section. So if you're on a recording, pause this, write those down, and then go forward. If you're not, we're going to keep rolling live. You could just at least, even if you're not writing this down, you're at least getting this thoughts triggered in your head. Go back and watch this later, pause it, and then fill all this stuff in. So now let's talk about starting to move forward and build yourself up for 2021. So what was some of what were some of the things that built you up in 2020 that now you can ride the fucking wave and have some momentum going into 2021. So what was it? What was it that made you better and made you stronger? And you know what it really should have been? You shouldn't be thinking that this Corona bullshit, lockdown, quarantine, all this fucking those businesses closed down, all this other stuff, thinking that that is what screwed up your year. You should be thinking, this is like, this is the, per dude, this situation that we had to deal with this year is like personal development on the highest level. Like fucking Tony Robinson or whatever that dude's name is that tells you to roar like a lion. He couldn't give you this level of personal development for any amount of money. Like, this is the highest, deepest, most granular level of personal development you could possibly have is the shit we've gone through for the last nine months. You should be like, holy fuck, I'm a badass. I'm still here. I'm still surviving. I'm still thriving. I'm still moving forward. I'm still making money. I'm still doing this and that and getting in better shape. So what made you stronger? And believe it or not, this quarantine and lockdown shit did make you stronger as long as that's a perspective you have on it. So next, we're going to go into a section on decisions about just decision making. So what, what would is something, I want you to decide, what's something today that you need to get done right now, today, before the year is over? What's something you need to close off, finish off today, and not drag it into the year? Whether it's one of those previous questions we had about what did you need to cut off? Basically, what should you stop doing? Don't, don't carry some undecided decisions into the new year. Make that shit right now. This is the decision-making time. This is putting on your fucking big boy pants and doing what you have to do and making that big, bold, hairy, risky decision that you need to make. Maybe it means to cut off a project you've been working on that's been wasting your time, a decision to stop doing it and putting it off until the third or fourth quarter of 2021. Like a new idea, a new business you want to start, but it's just, you're, it's taken away from your main thing. I don't remember who said it, but keep your main thing the main thing. Once you start working on some other shit, that's a bad decision. So maybe your decision to cut that shit until you get things back rolling, back on track, and you can focus on just one thing instead of scatter like a fucking scatterbrain, a tornado twisting all over the place, your head spinning and making everyone's head spin around you. I can't imagine anyone who does that to people, make people's fucking head spins around them. I can't imagine anyone who does that, like a nervous freaking wreck in every single little tiny situation. Anyway, that's a topic for another day. We'll get to that. So that's just decisions. What decisions do you need to make today? I want you to make a decision today and think about how you're how that's going to affect you in the year. Next, we're going to talk about designing your year. Design your upcoming year. Yes. Where did you fail to design your 2020? What was your goal? How was overall that year? How was, what, what was your schedule like? What was your day like? Think about it. How do you, how did you plan? How did you plan? Let's start small. Like start small with a day. Like, do you have a schedule? Do you, do you organize for yourself? Those are very simple things that will help you. We're designing a week, a month, a year, but you need to start with simplicity. And again, if this is something that is very difficult for you, you need to send us a message later today or right after so we can go back to it and help you doing this on even daily basis because we offer this as well. What do you need to do more of what you already been doing in this year? What, what do you need to do less of? And again, write those down and just go back to it because those are deep, super deep questions. What do you need to start doing this year? To create That's what we were saying. Create, create like a schedule for your family, for instance. Like, well, that's what we've done. We're going to give you an example on our family. We've done, we've done, throughout the week, we scheduled exactly a time for certain things. So I'm not going to give you in detail like what day is what, but I'm going to give you an example. We have a 
play time, meaning with the kids. We do a game board time or any kind of game that we wanted to play. We have a walk time that we just going for a walk. You know, you can go for a walk in the neighborhood. You can go for a walk somewhere else. Doesn't matter. We have a self-development time. We as a couple, we sit down and we spend decent amount of time on really learning and studying. We have a book time. We have a time to read and the whole family. So you know why you do this? Because it organizes you. You don't waste time on other things because guess what? If you're not going to do this, you're going to end up losing and wasting time on things that are really not important or things that are not going to move your needle forward and things that just going to waste your precious time. And look at this. Look into that year, how your year was. Sometimes, do you have a moment sometimes that you just run in circles and wasting time because you're not organized? Mm. But if but if you mm. put your schedule and you really stick to it, it's going to be so, you're going to look at this, it's going to be a reminder on your phone, you got to do this and this, you got to you gotta leave what you've been doing and go and do exactly that thing. So really putting yourself on a schedule as a family and as yourself, it's going to be a winning year. Okay. And one thing that one thing is left out of there, a time that needs to get scheduled. Just like every morning on reflections and I'm replaying my day. I have a you have your to-do list, right? Most a lot of the times your not to-do list is more important than your to-do list. Shit you you should not be doing that day. And I'll make a, a do not do list for the day. And a lot of times that will lead the day more that will lead to success more than the to-do list by avoiding shit you should be avoiding. So one thing to put on that list to schedule is what we call stupid time. Stupid time is time when you block everything else out. You don't have to worry about reading and learning and personal development. You don't have to worry about making money or doing anything serious or whatever. Stupid time could just be sitting on the couch and watching a dumb episode of Cobra Kai on Netflix or playing some Grand Theft Auto on, on PlayStation 4, playing some video games and just rampaging the city and blowing shit up and shooting cars and causing havoc in the game. Not like the fucking idiots that do that in real life, but just on the game, whatever. That's stupid time. You need your stupid time. Like recovery, mentally, more than physical, I mean, just the same as physically. Physical and mental recovery is not even just a, a recommendation. It's a fucking necessity. You have to. You have to recover your mind. Just sit down and play some stupid game on, on the, we have a little portable PlayStation. A play, we, a video game is a lot of our stupid time. We, that's usually our stupid time. But it's playing. It's, you can sit there and constantly be fine with your stupid time because you already know you did your due diligence in that day. You already had your family reading time. You already had made all your sales calls for the day, you got your workout in, you did your meditation, you did your studying, you spent time with your kids, you played board games, now it's time for just stupid time, right? where we don't have to think. It's not thinking time. It's time to just let your mind relax. And guess what? That stupid time, as unproductive as it might sound, actually makes you 10 times more productive throughout your day because you know you have that, that stupid time to relax and to shut down and to shut down the rest of the world. And then it also regenerates you and gets you focused and ready to keep going after that so it makes you actually more productive and more efficient even though it sounds like it's not just called fucking stupid time stupid time is very fucking smart all right so the next thing is what ha and, and talking about stupid time whatever else what habits do you need to implement what new habits do you need to start and don't fucking tell me you're going to start on new year's just like i told hooper duber here on instagram don't start the new habit tomorrow start that fucking habit today you're going to stop drinking. Don't tell me you're going to stop drinking on January 1st. Fuck that. You're going to stop drinking today. Right now. So that makes you have to go out to do your little fucking parties and blowing your little fucking horns, whatever else you're doing, without having to put all that shit in your pie holster. All that alcohol and all that poison and all that shit. You're going to stop drinking? Stop drinking today. I dare you. I challenge you as your coach to stop fucking drinking today, not tomorrow if you're going to stop drinking. But what other habits do you need to implement? Whether it's a morning routine or any of the other things we just talked about, the reading, the personal development. Like, it's... It's sickening to me how many people don't work on their personal development. They think it's too a waste of their time to read or to study or to learn some new skills and they'll just go living in their average, mediocre fucking life day after day. So what new habits do you need to implement? What new skills do you need to learn? And on top of that, if you do enough of that stuff to lead to your success with your family, your business, your fitness, your finances like we were talking about, then what hobbies do you wish you did more of in 2020? And then what hobbies do you want to start doing in 2021? Because you should have some hobbies. Like we like to go shooting. We like to go playing. We like to play video games. We like to go do, uh, do bike riding. We like to do jujitsu. It just happens some of those also help with your fitness. Imagine that. You can have a hobby that actually fucking propels you forward in some major areas of life. 
but you should just have some hobbies that are just for fun. But as much as they seem like they're just for fun, they're also going to regenerate you and keep you, you'll, you'll come up with some of your best ideas when you're, when you're in some of those hobbies of yours. So what hobbies you wish you could have done that you have, you wish you had more time of in 2020? How are you going to make more time for it in 2021? And I'll tell you how by following everything we just fucking went over pretty much. And then what new hobbies do you want to start in 2021? That's what you need, you need to start, start thinking about. And on these hobbies, I want to touch a very important hobby that some of these hobbies that you want to start, it has to be connected to fitness, guys. Because you might just totally avoid everything, doing everything in life and not touching any activity. An activity, doing activity for our life, it's going to make your life longer. We need to understand this, that health is number one priority. Now, what is the theme of this new year but what was also think about it what was the theme of the 2020 what were your major projects what were you misery on? bitching complaining excuses what was better it? not be a bitch better fucking stop it what was it in 2021 what is gonna be the big big theme for your fitness for your career for your family write those down guys this is important you know, avoidance, a lot of times some people will come here and gonna they're going to say, oh, it's another episode, whatever they're talking about, it's that self-development stuff. And like Steve said, they're going to stay in the same level. They're not going to change anything in their 2021. They're not going to develop. They're not going to, they're not going to scale. And, and that's the problem. It's the avoidance. And you know what? Most of the people that do that, are the ones that they know that something's supposed to be improved. They know. Mm. Right? Yes. Mm. Let's go. Oh. Yippee. Whippy. Oh, I'm all fired up. I'm all fired up at that speech. <laughs> theme. So our, our theme really for the theme all the time for every year really comes is just the word discipline. Discipline is the theme. Discipline is the fucking mother of everything. But the real, we, we want to make a theme. So we, a theme to follow along with. Theme we came up with, came up with for this year which some of us apparently haven't started implementing yet, I guess it's not 2021, is shut up. Shut up is the theme of 2021. That means shut the fuck up and just do it. Shut the fuck up and take action. Stop talking and babbling about shit and just fucking do it. Just shut up and have some discipline. Have the discipline to shut up and just move. Take action. Make it happen. Not talk about the 10, 15 different things of how to do this. Where does this light have to be? Should I put this here? Should I put this thing there? Just shut the fuck up and do it. Just shut up and do it. Shut up and get off your fucking ass. Shut up is the theme for 2021 because everyone's been fucking babbling in 2020. I'm fucking sick of it. Shut the fuck up. That's what you need to do for 2021. I'm going to tattoo that. I need something to happen on this form. I'm going to put shut the fuck up right here. But that might be kind of trashy of me, but whatever. Anyway, get me all fired up. I don't remember what we're talking about now. You make me start losing my shit. Start What's thinking the about theme? this stuff. The theme of shut up. And the by theme. the way, Steve did already the episode on the shut up just a few days ago. So go back to it. Watch it. It's going to be good for you. Let's move forward. Dreams. Let's touch on dreams. Let's do the shut up version of that. Like not the not shut up. Let's pretend it's 2021 and we're going to do the shut up version of dreams. If you, ca you catch my drift. Perfect. Let's keep rolling. I just shut up. All right. I'll take over. Shut up means the shorter version. Shut up means like, shut up means talk 80% less than you're normally talking. That's what shut up means. Like, if if I have a nail that went through my fucking foot and it's splurting out blood, right? And someone says, oh my God, that looks like it hurts. That really must hurt. Did you hurt your foot with the nail? Go no shit. Shut the fuck up and go give me, a, I don't know, something. Uh, something to stop the bleeding. Just shut up. 80% less words. Make this the year of 80% less fucking words. And it's fucking perfect because I don't like talking. I don't like people talking to me. I don't like talking to people. Shut the fuck up is the perfect theme. Shut up and show me. Don't tell me. Fucking show me. Shut up and fucking do it. You give me all, I don't even remember where we are again. You can get me on shut up again because too many people need to shut up. Bitching and talking on the internet about all this bullshit that's going on in the world. Shut the fuck up and you don't like it. Go do something about it. Not riding like a fucking idiot and jump breaking through an Apple store. Not that shit. That's not what we're talking about. We're not saying shut up and go break into an Apple store. Shut up and like do something more positive. Do something to make an impact. Do something that actually affects you and your life and your family for positive moves you forward. Crying and bitching and moaning on the fucking internet does not move your family forward. Does not make you more money. It makes you fucking miserable. And teach your kids how to be fucking miserable. You get me started. I don't even remember where I am. We're supposed to be talking about forward. dreams and 
I guess that wasn't the shut up version. I didn't give you the shut up version. My apologies. It's not 2021 yet, so we don't have to shut up yet. Steve loves to shut up and just be quiet, and that's what we need to sometimes implement, shut up. Yes, some of us definitely that's need to. Definitely. Definitely me. I so I'm so guilty of it. Yes, we see that. Next <laughs> dream. Dream. Should I scream? I'm scared. All right. Yes. So somebody likes it. Yes. Thank you so much. Just shut up the bitching voice inside of us. Yes. Shut that bitch up. Kill the inner bitch. It's in the inner bitch is trying to negotiate with you 24 hours a day. Even all of us. I have the inner bitch. I have a bitch in me nonstop. I am a fucking bitch. But I have to shut that bitch up to unleash the beast. To get out of bed early in the morning. The bitch tries to say, oh, stay in bed. I say, shut up, motherfucker. I got shit to do. I got a fucking world to change. I got some kids to be a role model to. Anyway, dream. Yes, yes. Uh, we're going to touch on the on the, your busy work. You know, uh, I hear this all the time from coaching clients. I, when I speak to our clients, when I speak to different clients, it's I'm busy. I'm doing all this stuff. And when we go down to deep, it's fun. And we're finding out. That is just busy, unproductive work. It's just like scattered all over the place, no organization, and it's not moving your life in any direction. So, what did you create this 2020? What was your life mission? What was your good busy work? Not the bad one that we just talked about. What have you spent time on? And what will you spend time on 2021? That it's going to be not just a busy work, busy doing things and not moving anywhere, right? We're talking like we, when you look into the previous questions, you're going to find uh, the core of it. Like it's all about doing the things that's going to scale you, that's going to uh, progress your health, that's going to progress your marriage, that's going to progress the interaction with your kids, that's going to progress you, your self-development. That's the, that's the stuff we're talking about. So write those down. What do you want to feel again more in 2020? That you, well, in 2021, that you got away in 20. It's these messes that have come up here and then you can see on my, all my see, nose hairs. I almost made a mistake here because if we do this every year, we need to adjust the, the years. So what do you feel like, again, doing doing more of in 2021 okay that you got away in 2020 and that's that's what i was talking about the busy life the busy work and what is a bold move you can make this year fuck this year today make the move today what bold move can you make today and then also what bigger bold moves more a list you can make here but i want you to do one of them today make a fucking bold move today stop being a little bitch that's what i have to tell you that should have been the theme for the new year that basically is the same thing. Shut up means stopping a little bitch. Like, shut that bitch up. And what's a, what's a bold move you can make? I want you to make one bold move today. You got a few hours left before the new year. You got like 12 hours left to make shit happen. Well, like, for some of us, right? Some of you guys are will be reading the new year sooner. But yes, you have some time left. So let's do it. Like literally in 12 hours, you can, if you think you had a miserable, horrible year, you literally can make this a successful year within the next 12 hours. Like, who can you reach out to today that needs your help? Who can you reach out to that you need help from them and ask them a question that could help you. What, if you plan all this stuff here, this will make your year for fucking, your past year successful. Like that's when you think about it. Stop it, the, none of the, the bitching and the moaning and, and excuse making and all this bullshit. Make a bold move today. I want you to make a bold move today. I want to hear what your bold move is going to be. Put it there in the freaking comments. And then I want to ask, we've already talked about the, the skills, the habits, the hobbies you want to start, but I want to ask you this simple question. If, if you're going to make next year 10 times fucking hundred times more successful than you were last year. I don't know whose phone is going off when I'm talking. If you're going to make next year more successful than this past year, you're going to make it 10 times more successful. What habits are you going to need to start implementing right now, today? What habits? Little habits. Maybe waking up 30 minutes earlier. Maybe journaling in the morning. Maybe meditating. Maybe working out, starting with working out. Maybe going for a walk once a day. Maybe reading a day, sending all these things we just talked about. These are all time. Everything we just said are fucking free and you can start today. You can start reading today. You can start personal development today. You can start going for a walk, meditating, working out, having a positive mindset, giving maximum effort. It's all fucking free. So stop with the fucking excuses because this shit is free. It's fucking free and you have 12 hours to do this shit and I'm challenging you to do all this shit within the next 12 hours. And if you do it and you ride those that wave of these little tiny, tiny, little tiny things, it'll lead to a, a year 
10 times more successful than you just had. I fucking guarantee it. But you're too busy making excuses and talking about why you can't do this, why you can't do that. You don't have time, you don't have money. It doesn't take time or it doesn't take money to fucking meditate, to do some journaling, to read a fucking book. Sure, it takes time, but time into your fucking head, not time into commenting on fucking MySpace about why you think or think not someone should put a fucking face diaper on their face. <laughs> Steve got fired up. <laughs> and we gotta go forward. What is the big dream of yours in 2021? So again, write this down, but you know, it's not just a dream. It has to be fulfilled by action because if we just dreaming and not doing anything about it, it's just, it's just a dream, right? It's going to be just in your head on a piece of paper. Now, big things coming up, top three personal goals for the upcoming year, 2021, write those down three. We always concentrate on the bigger, right? right? The, the three ideas. The three big goals, top three professional goals. So we have personal, we have professional in 2021. Write those down. And we're going to wrap this up with just a couple things I want to uh, talk about what you should be doing, what you should always have and be prepared for because you see this crazy la last, this past year, if you weren't prepared, you probably did have a rough year. So you should always have a minimum, and this is a minimum of Think about money in money in the bank. You should have a minimum of six months and even up to 12 months of, of money aside just to deal with all your expenses what in your business, in your personal life. That should be money set aside. So if everything went to shit, you'd have at least, and you could start with a minimum of three months if you had to. But imagine that. Everything. You, you Zero. went to zero. And you have three months of reserves set aside. Like if we didn't have that plan, the way the shit went went sideways in the world, we would have been screwed. So we used a ton of our reserve, but that's that's what it's there for. That's the whole purpose of it. We used a lot of our reserve in this last year with multiple businesses and all kinds of stuff because we want to maintain our lifestyle at the same time. So we'll use our reserve rather than suffering. You also should always have a minimum. And again, I'm going to say 12 months, but you could start with three months, whatever you want, with a minimum of food in your house for 12 months worth of food for your entire family, 12 months worth of water in your family, and also a plan to generate more food and more water, whether it's water purification, storage of water, rain catching systems, and, and, and you're probably like, oh, this is like one of those crazy whacked out prep reviews, <laughs> right? <laughs> Everyone who says that those preppers are whacked out until this last year, those guys are now fucking geniuses. We didn't have to leave our house to get toilet paper. We haven't bought toilet paper in I don't know how long, because you know why? Because we have we store that stuff up. We didn't have to hoard it because we slowly built up our supplies of everything. We haven't bought a fucking Q-tip in I don't know how many years because we have enough to last a lifetime because we keep stockpiling it, keep building it up over the time, over years, even shit we didn't need, a little bit here, a little bit there, extra supplements, extra vitamins, food that's going to last 25 years, freeze-dried food or MREs. Fucking delicious. We can live off that shit. Mm -hmm. Fucking awesome. You should have alternate power sources, generators. If your lights go out, it could be anything. You could have a snowstorm, hurricane, rain, Fucking, who knows what, the alien attack. Someone said, I don't know if this is true, that in this government stimulus package that it started off a countdown for 180 days, that within 180 days that the government has to release information that they have and intelligence they have on UFOs. Like, I don't know how that had to do with a stimulus package for fucking coronavirus, but someone put that on. I don't know if that's true or not. I didn't look if it's true, but that that, that, that was somehow snuck into this package. Like, money, had some reason that it set off a countdown that they have to give... So, we were getting attacked by aliens. Listen, would you be shocked if we got attacked by aliens? I wouldn't. I've been fucking ready for it. I need it. I want it. Let's go. Let's do it. Let's bring it. You should have your weapons. You should have a, a, an unlimited supply of, of bad guy candy. That's those little metal things that go pew, pew, pew out of, out of your weapons. You should have a, a weapons, ammo, outdoor survival gear. You should have alternate shelter sources, alternate Fuel and power sources, you should learn some kind of martial arts and self-defense, both standing up and on the ground, some kind of boxing, kickboxing, Muay Thai, ground ground fighting, probably jiu-jitsu is going to be your best bet there and, and that anyone can learn and apply. That's the way you need to think about it. But what about Steve and, and just uh, the apocalypse or if the zombie's going to come around and start running, chasing us? What's the best thing is going to go? Have you been to downtown LA? That shit's happening already. It's your cardio is going to go. You're not going to run. Escape from the freaking vicious zombie running after you. The cardio. So what are you going to need to take care of yourself? Health. You need to do cardio. You stole that shit from Zombieland. Of course just, I did. We just watched 
We just watched Zombieland. Zombieland. We watched Zombieland Part 2 yesterday, double tap, and in Zombieland Part 1, they go over the rules. Rule number one for zombies for us uh, is cardio. See. Si. The little weasel, cardio. the little kid that plays Mark Zanderberg from the Facebook, Facebook. He, he's in the movie, the guy that plays him is in that. And he's got his rules, his little like nerd list of rules, but it's like rules really for life. It's not for Zombieland. It's funny how you take that stuff. It's like such a dumb, mind-numbing, stupid time movie that we watch, but really you take it and like all the lessons are... They're like real life life lessons. Like, number one lesson was cardio. Because you need that energy endurance to survive, not just the fucking zombies, survive life. To keep up with your kids. To have the energy to have a tug of war with your grand unborn grandchildren on the fucking beach one day, 20, 30 years from now, or five years from now, for some of us. So, yeah. So, cardio. Get your shit together. So, all that stuff you need to think about. Having reserves and being prepared for all these different situations sounds fucking crazy, but that's what you need to do. Having that money both in the bank and maybe even some cash. If, if ATMs are down, you should have a little bit of cash that you keep on hand. Weapons, ammo, survival gear. Train with this stuff. Practice this stuff. Make it normal. We do a survival day at least once a month. Next time we do it, we're going to do it for two days. Next time we do it, we're going to do it for a week. A week straight of just survival day. Living off the land is what we're going to do with just our supplies we can carry on our backs. So prepare for that stuff so when shit goes sideways and, and disaster happens, it won't be a disaster because you're prepared and both financially Mentally, emotionally, and physically, you need to be prepared for all this shit. And be prepared for the fucked up 2021 that's coming up. Because you think, everyone thinks, and you're so fucking stupid when you think this way. You're like, oh my god, when is 2020 going to be over? When's it going to be over? It doesn't matter when it's over. Because if you're the same, like, lazy, not working out, excuse-making motherfucker that you were in 2021, guess what? When that fucking dumbass ball drops, you're not even allowed to go see in person probably in Times Square at midnight... And it's now 2021, you're still a fucking loser if you were a loser before, if you're not doing something about it. So it doesn't matter the fuck that you flip a calendar, not all of a sudden magically, there's no more corona, there's no more dumbasses, there's no more stupid fucking president arguments on the internet, there's no more face diapers. It's all going to still be there, and I promise you, I guarantee you, everyone thinks, oh, I can't wait till 2021, till 2020 is over. I promise you, 2021 is going to be more fucked up than 2020. He's on paper, right. on paper. It won't be for me mentally or physically or emotionally because we'll be prepared for it. We're ready for it. We'll just keep fucking marching along doing what we're doing. But I guarantee you 2021 will be more fucked up. But even with it being more fucked up, like with all the stupid shit that goes on, you can make it the fucking best year ever. You can make it the best year ever. Yes. That's an awesome advice. So guys, don't think like the moment, boom, calendar changes and we're going into a new year and everything is forgotten. We carry this around with us. And I want you to be prepared for this. You know, plan for the best, but be prepared for the worst that this might be a very difficult year, but what you're going to control and how you're going to act and what you're going to do, it's up to you. I see. Because now you got the lessons from us and you know what's controllable. Awesome. Yeah. And those are basic things that we taught you today. Remember, health and family is number one and self-improvement, self-development. That's what's going to get you going and it's going to give you that awesome wall to protect you from what's outside, what in 2021. You got to build that strong foundation and have the armor, armor for yourself. So don't forget, the word of the day every day should be discipline. And the word of the year, the, the theme of the year is shut up, shut the flip up for 2021. Shut the fuck up and make shit happen. We will talk to you later. If you have any questions, comments, put them down below. So take the time to rewatch this, pause it all, answer all those questions in depth. Each one of these should be like a page long question. You should have a fucking notebook ready when this is done. And answer all those questions. Let us know how it goes. Put some questions, comments down below. Like this video, share this video. I will talk to you later. It is time to shut up and kick ass in 2021, starting right now. Not waiting until the freaking new year, not waiting until midnight. Start now. Make shit happen now. Make the changes now. Step the F up now. So I will talk to you later. You are freaking awesome. I'm sure a little freak show here wants yes. to tell you something to go out with a bang. No! Excuse Very, very normal child. I can't imagine That's where he gets it from. Mom. We will talk to you later. You are fucking awesome. No excuses. No excuses, everybody.